won't be long. Just a short, we eat in half hour, just a short sort of debriefing things about what you observe uh, in the, what you observe, the question, whatever. Normally you're supposed to philosophizing is seeing. Yes? Oh, I'm looking at your girls, they're so busy, these young girls. So, they have such an intense social life. They make signs on the other side, you know. Anyway, so, uh, who wants to make a comment about the exercise or a question, anything you want? Alex, say, what can I do for you? Uh, I noticed that I realized more uh, uh, in the result of me being a consultant about my own behavior. As a consultant, you see more your behavior. Yes, yeah? I see more my behavior, how I rush, how I want to be nice, how I, how I want to uh, go to the result. Right. And worry. And, and worry. Worry. Worry, yes. You worry. Okay. Yeah? And by the way, that's an interesting comment because I know sometimes people see me question and says, well, how about you? You know, who does that to you? And I tell people, when you do this job, Every time you, you're, you have to question yourself, otherwise you cannot do it, right? I've been answering to you, you know, if, if, if you think you know already, you cannot question. It will be very visible, you just state, right? So to work, doing this, it's a work on yourself, absolutely. You, you see, you know, yeah. And you get this feedback anyway. All right, yes? Any other comment or question, observation in the process? Normally, everybody should have their hand up, you know? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, Ed, you didn't know. It was only for smart people. I'm like, Ed, see, Ed's going to speak. Listen, Ed. Uh, there was a moment when I was asking questions, but I thought, okay, is there, I asked the question, is there one word, one concept that characterizes this? And when I asked this question, I did not know myself what was the abstract right. concept. And I thought afterwards, yeah. I'm using a trick. You and use what? I use a trick, this question. Can you characterize this in a right. more after? And my question is, should you, if you ask this question, should you have in yourself, as the one who's asking the questions, have these more abstract concepts? Or should you right. not? Can it be just an open question? Well, uh, let me answer this one. So when I do this with children, and teachers, oh my god! How can you ask children those questions? I could never answer myself. And they thought, well, neither could I. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, so what? You know? I think I like the principle of the ignorant master. Is that ignorant master? Yeah, okay? Is it real ignorant master or is it well, attitude? Well, let me tell you. Sometimes I ask questions, I do not know the answer. You know? I ask. For example, initially, when we started the business between perfect and good, I, I didn't even think about it, you see? I started asking the question, see what was going to happen. I didn't try. On this one, I would have to think. Sometimes the an answer comes to your head, right? Sometimes you think maybe it's almost impossible to answer. And sometimes say, to answer, I would have to stop, think about it, and come to a decision. But since I'm in the process, I don't ask myself, who cares? See, your job here is not to think, it's to make other people think. And that's what's very strange for people, especially philosophers, in practical philosophy. You're not here to think, you have to make people think. But to make people think, you have to think in a certain way, which is not the usual way. You have to think, it's like, uh, uh, how do you call this in English? Orgolief, barolief. You know when you have this thing where it's either the sculptures are coming out or it's dug inside, right? Well, how do you say this in English? Yeah. You know inside when you out, have outside in. Yeah, but you have this little freeze sculpture, and sometimes they're dug inside. You know. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. But but you work like you work negative. Yeah, and you work in. Let's put it this way: you work in negative. You don't work in positive. So asking questions where I don't know the answer. I mean, that's fine, it's basic, right? And even some of them I know, but I put it back. So no, it's really ignorant master. 
Sometimes it's a whole thing of Socrates, right? There's a big debate about Socrates. He says he knows, he doesn't know, but does he really not know, you know, this, this. And it's, when you do this practice, you discover that there's a whole ambiguity about this, about knowing and not knowing. At the same time, he knows, but at the same time, it's in the back, right? So it's coming back and forth, right? Uh, so it's, it's a very strange relationship to your knowledge. But in opposition to what I would call the normal professor, your knowledge is never in the forefront. Even if you know, it's in the background, you see? It, and you use it to ask questions. And sometimes, funnily enough, your thinking will change. You know, I see this very often in discussions. I run a discussion, and all these questions I ask is to test. People say, oh, yes, you want to convince. No, I don't want to. I want to test. What this person is going to do is something, something comes out, ah, okay, yes, okay. By the way, there was a big discussion about this after people were bothered with this good and perfect because Olga says, I see the connection between good and perfect. I told her, I see it too. But the question is, is it said? Is it articulated, right? That makes a whole difference. So my knowledge, who cares about my knowledge, right? So just to summarize, you don't have to know, and even if you know, Put it aside and see what happens, right? But I like the idea of asking things that you don't know the answer. But, but you did it today a lot of times. Uh, is there a contradiction? Contradiction in what you said. I think that you ask this question if you know or s yeah. know, see that there is a contradiction. Yes, that's yeah. true. That's true. It's now, so okay, there's two things. There's two things. First, sometimes you ask, I ask, ask question for the hell of it. Just to see what's going to happen. Often, there is. Now the question is, for me, it's not so much this contradiction or not, it's how the person is going to react to it, right? Either deny it, not deny it, then let's see, how can we solve this, not solve it? So of course. But sometimes, for the hell of it, I ask people, do you see the problem there? I don't see any problem. And then they will find a problem, right? So it, 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 you have to see, it's a, you play with all this, you know? It's, 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 a, it's a thinking game, right? So just so to answer you, as far as I was concerned, asking questions, you don't know the answer, it's fine with me. But to conceptualize that somebody conceptualizes their own speech, fundamental. I always try to get people to conceptualize their own speech. And sometimes I get concepts I did not expect. But I always be boring, you know, of course. Yeah. You know? And I, with children it's the most striking, because the teachers, ah, how are you? You know, they, they get so, you know. Because teachers are used to asking questions only when they know already the answer, and they want that answer. So it's very strange for them not to say, what do you mean you don't know, you know? No. You're the philosopher, you should know. Say, well, maybe I don't want to know, but uh, I'll ask you. <laughs> anyway. Any other question or comment about the exercise? Yeah? Um, is there a difference between, now you distinguish the thinking that you provoke with a consultant yes. and the thinking you do as consultant? But there is a moment of remembering as well, where you try to to find the, the red line or to, right. to go back to the original question yeah. or so. But I see that not as same movements like oh. this. Remembering yes. is a different thing than You're right. the liberating yourself <laughs> in, the, in the question. That, that's but why it's a tough job. You got to play different roles, right? You know, uh, Plato. You know, mm -hmm. the big uh, Socrates. You know who is a big fan of is uh, Odysseus. You know Odysseus. Everybody's okay. Odysseus, Ulysses, however you call it, different language, call it different thing. The hero of of the uh, of Homer, right? And he's called the man with a hundred faces. You know the man with a hundred faces, right? You see Odysseus when he speaks, it's not because he's convinced. He speaks. He's asked to come because he has to produce something. It, there's a performative dimension. Right? Not performative in the sense of rhetoric that you have to convince, but performative in the sense of producing some self-consciousness. And that's, that's very much in the heart of this. So of course, like, you're like a military. For me, uh, a consultation, a workshop, you have to use different strategies. You know, strategies of pushing, strategies of withdrawing, strategies of getting people to speak. Yes, I agree. You know, and sometimes you even have for example, people who don't know, and then this time I might produce a concept just to see the effect. But never it's to defend a position. Never. You know, sometimes, or even if, even if you do it sometimes, it's to see what's going to happen across. 
And that's this, you know, this uh, kind of uh, martial art posture. And of course, you try different things. Yeah. Sometimes you know, sometimes you don't know, sometimes you say, sometimes you ask them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Okay? And it's it, like, another question would be like, when do you ask for an example? But there's no rules to decide upon that. Well, there are little rules, or technical rules. I ask for an example when it's, it's, by the way, it's the idea of Kant. See, the philosopher are useful here. Kant tells you, you know, uh, uh, when the, he says, when the, the, the concept, uh, when the concept uh, uh, needs, uh, when it's, uh, if it's, if it's, em it's, it's, it's empty, you know, when it doesn't have some concrete thing, you can put it. So sometimes somebody speaks to you, you can. It's obvious, the concrete thing. If it sounds too abstract, I don't know, I say, give me an example. On the reverse, an example without a concept, he calls it blind. So in absolutely you need both. But sometimes it's rather obvious. The, well, the example can be more obvious. Concept is more rarely obvious, so you can ask for it. But the idea that normally you should have both. And if one seems to be very absent, then you ask for it, you know? This is like all this thing. I, you know, I, I go through a lot of the philosophers in how they give you tools for philosophical practice. Just like, for example, dialectics of Hegel, A is A, then right away, how A, a is not A, right? The idea this morning, uh, the earlier, about the thing, have Plato's idea, right? Any two concepts are by definition always different, right? But for pragmatic reason, they can be replaceable. So, you, you know, you, you use all this stuff. You know? mm -hmm. And it helps you to, to structure the thinking. Or it's syllogism, you know, when somebody makes a statement, you know, there's always some major, minor leading to that conclusion. So you have syllogism concept in your head, right? So you use philosophical culture as a way to clarify structure and knowing what kind of questions to ask. You know? Okay? Okay. Yeah. Any other question or comment? Yeah? In this method, uh, is there um, your aim? Is your aim is just conceptualization? Uh, the concept, or no, no. is your no, aim I, I, no. is uh, reaching, for example, uh, in, because a kind of no wait wait can I can I suggest to you yes. when you ask a question, yes. don't justify the question. It's very important. Ask the question, then let it write. You understand? Let it write. Yes. Okay. So just ask your question. Don't justify. Just ask it. Go ahead. Yes. Is a kind of conceptual uh, conceptualization the concept? Uh, if it's the purpose of the exercise. No, no. I. So uh, ask the question. What is the question? Yes. This method. Yeah. Is based on conceptualization the concept? Your, uh, is the method, method based? No. no okay. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's language problem. Conceptualization is one competency, one skill. Right? Yes. You know, it's not, it's not the purpose. We're mm -hmm. not trying to make it maybe more conceptual. It's, it, if, if I have to give you, uh, in the way I see it, a uh, concept, which is, would be some kind of purpose. I like the idea that people say, why you do this for nothing? For the hell of it. In a sense, for the hell of it? Mm -hmm. For the hell of it. You have an expression? Yeah. Maybe you don't say hell of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay, but yeah. okay. okay. fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. But, I like it, but it's just because thinking is, but if I have to give a concept, I will give you consciousness. Mm -hmm. Conceptualization is a mean for consciousness. Just like problematization is a mean for consciousness. Just like argumentation is a mean for consciousness. If I have to give you, it's not conceptualization, it's only a tool, but consciousness. How do you say consciousness? Yes, no, yes, yes is not the word for consciousness. How do you say it? Agohi. Agohi. Yeah, I like it. Sounds good. Yeah, words. Agohi. That that would be for me more important. Agohi. Agohi. Okay. Okay. Conceptualization is one skill among different skills. I don't know, but sometimes. You don't know. You I don't know, but. But what is it you don't know? What is it you don't know? No, I want to explain. Uh, Maybe can, can, can I can ask you to method, slow down a minute? No, no. Because it's slow down. See, at a certain time, what? I'm not fast. Well, you are I'm too fast, Mali. You're too fast. You start saying I don't know. So I listen. Mali, he doesn't know. 
and I want to know what you don't know, but you move fast. You have already gone somewhere else. When you say I don't know, I want to know what you don't know. Why you go? You are going too fast. You see. So what is it you don't know? Because I, it seems no, to no, me... No, 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 not because. What? You know the difference between what and why? <clears throat> no, Tell her... No, shh, shh, let me hear slow. Tell her the difference between what, what... How do you say what? I can't hear speech. Malihe. Just with this Malihe, listen to me. Do you know the difference between what and why? Yes. Translate for me. Yes. Can you please translate? Just help me. Okay. Don't resist. She's okay. She, she beats you, I'll protect you. Do you know the difference between what and what? Yes, I know. Translate. Um, I mean, you need to have a word. See? I ask you what? What? And you answer me because. No. Because answers why, not what. So I'm not asking you why you don't know, but what you don't know. What you don't know. What is it? I wanted to say. No. <laughs> Tell no. me what, Ali. If you want to make monologue. But I don't want. I. I don't want to answer to you. You. I. Okay. My Fine, Ali. No problem. Ask Stop me. a second. If you don't want to answer me, there's no problem. I stop the workshop. Malihe, she makes a speech as long as she wants. And when you're finished, I start workshop again. So, wait a minute. Workshop stops. You speak. In this method, it seems to me somehow, uh, somehow, it's a, a kind of playing with words. And uh, it's... Uh, is not behind it something, uh, some purpose to reach to something. You know, because uh, we, we don't know this method. It's my problem. It's not your problem. Because my, uh, we have no, we don't know this method. Uh, I uh, didn't work uh, with this method and I have uh, some question about this. Somehow, for example, in 10 minutes, in, uh, I, uh, it seems to me we play with word. We don't conceptualize, conceptualize the word. Finish. We start the workshop again. <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to say or ask something? Please raise your hand. Yes? Uh, I have a comment uh, about these 10 minutes. I think... But, but the exercise? Yes, this, this exercise. I think uh, uh, this exercise, uh, or if this task uh, um, lead to us... Uh, um, could you speak could, could you repeat the question? Yeah. Yes. Okay, she's speaking about the 10 minutes, and this task led us to... Uh, this task uh, led us to... Uh, Self-correction. Self-correction. Yes, yeah, self-correction with uh, uh, a continuous uh, question. With continuous question led yes. to self-correction. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you, you like that? Yes. I okay. Like. You find it useful. Yes. Okay. Any other comment or question? Yes. Oh, oh there's people that didn't speak yet. The new. Yes. Well, I I found the exercise very helpful uh, with my partners. Uh, having been like the counselor and uh, what is the other the, the name for the other person? Well, you can call the it your company? friend, the subject, okay. the client, the other guy, the one the ignorant. Uh, because uh, because uh, when making the questions, uh, I I heard the 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 answers of the others. And I was also learning something about myself. Right. So I think this is uh, like a two-way, yes, <laughs> two-way yes. exercise. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I maybe I learned more about in uh, twenty minutes. I learned more about Julia and uh, when. <laughs> oh. 
Really? <laughs> Plus. Plus. Uh, then I have ever learned uh, from people I have known for years. Right. Tells a lot about your life. Very huh? interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. But it's that that's the whole point. See? And that's why people get very nervous when we ask these kind of questions. People say, let me speak, let me speak, let me speak. But no. See, it's not let me speak. It's accepting to answer somebody else's question. Except that somebody says, hello, anybody home? Normally in life we don't do this. We say, I want to make my speech. Nobody's going to ask me a question. You know, leave me alone. I will have a speech. I want to express myself, right? And the rule of the game is no. You let somebody come in and you answer his question. That's why it's so important. Now, people say, why do we spend so much time determining if Ahmed is answering or not, as uh, Yeva says the question, because it's, it's tricky. And we have to make, to develop an acute uh, uh, sense if the person answering or not. So you have to recognize if the person is letting you in or not. Because if he lets you in, fine. If he does not, you have to spot it out, right? And this way, indeed, you will know people in an amazing way very quickly. In one hour of consultation, for example, it might be amazing, uh, what we discover and what the person discovers about himself. It's very, it's very, uh, uh, it's very efficient, you know. That's, uh, it, it, it's very quick, right? And that's what's a bit sometimes scary about it, because you go quickly with concepts, go to the crucial problem in this, it goes very quickly. Yeah. And once a psychoanalyst, he didn't tell you a psychoanalyst came for a consultation, it's, and at the end he, he told me I'm a psychoanalyst, and say, I wanted to see what you were doing. He says, it's funny. He says, if I had to say the difference, he says, you try to do in one hour what we take 10 years to do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice, it's true, in a way. But at the same time, that's why it's hard for some people, you know, who, who don't want to answer your question and resist. Because that means you have to be taught, you have to, to be able right away to take distance. In a way here, people already are more willing to do it than many people, even though it would seem that there's a lot of resistance. So anyway, okay, I'm glad you like it. But you'll see as the week go, practicing this every day, we'll do it every uh, afternoon, every evening, we'll do this. You will see that as well people get more uh, efficient on asking these questions, right? And tonight, uh, for people who tried the, the one hour sessions, you see one hour goes even you know, deeper. Yeah. So any other question, come, wait, people that didn't speak yet, any other one that didn't speak wants to make a comment, a question about what you observed? in the consultation process, either by questioning or being questioned. What were the difficulties? What? I have a question, but the... Uh, I prefer to see people that didn't say. Clyde, so what, what did you think about this little exercise? I thought it was a good exercise, and uh, it Consensus in our group about what uh, was it boring? Was not boring. The consensus, really? Okay. No, I mean uh, the consensus about the the format of, of how to go about. I mean, okay. I, I I will not give you the details of our discussions. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask. <laughs> okay. So, but what's the main point that struck you in all this? That is one thing. Which you had your consensus on for some, some point, or it's a secret. It wasn't one thing that struck me. It's, okay. it's a matter of, of trying to find a format and, and uh, exchanging, um, listening <coughs> to what's going on. Okay, so that, that was the difficulty to listen to what's going on. That was the essence. That was the essence. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Comment? Question? See, by the way, this is a habit, huh? Well, you should come back here just the way you should have concepts right away. You should say, okay, there's something I observed. Otherwise, it's, okay, I did it, you know, like a big blur. So it's a good practice, like, you know. So what, what, uh, what did you see? Something you saw, you know? Or something you wondered about? I'm interested to learn what I see, too. <laughs> Okay, after he's going to give you an interview during dinner. Come on. Why don't you ask somebody that didn't speak yet, rather? You don't want to know anybody else? 
they're going to be jealous. And what is Alexei have there? You know? Oh, were you interested in speaking with others in that thing or no? No, they were boring. No, no, no. Uh, wait. Well, uh, yes. Well, well, did you find anything interesting speaking with others? Uh, or no? <laughs> I know it's a touchy issue. You know. yes. So, what? Tell us when was interesting about talking to other people. Myself, so it's quite recent. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Can you tell us or no? It's, yeah, I, I discovered I'm too ambitious. Uh, You're too ambitious. Yeah. Your mother never told you before. No, she didn't. Oh, it's because she of her. Always says you have two kinds of mother. The ones that think you're too ambitious, the ones that think you're not ambitious enough. No, she never told me I'm ambitious. She told the opposite. So. Yeah, you're not enough ambitious. No, yeah. yeah she's the other type. There's two types of mothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's the other type. She's the other She discovered you're ambitious, yeah? And is that a problem? No, no, yeah, it was a problem, yeah. Why is it a problem to be ambitious in this um, business? It gives me fear of failing. Exactly, yeah. Okay. If you want too much, there's more risk of uh, failing, yeah? yeah. Yes, and maybe then the others become a problem because they're the witness of your own failure. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that one came in a little bit quick. <laughs> so, I don't care what the other people think. Well, you know, can, can I give you a secret? You know, uh, by the way, a little trick. When you question people, mm -hmm. beside the content and the tone, there's one thing I listen a lot to, is a rhythm. Right? Now, a quick answer, very quick answer, I have Shakespeare in my, in my ear saying, Thou dost protest too much. This was too quick, my friend. Mm -hmm. no? Are you cheating me? Uh, I want you to learn. You know? Mm -hmm. you know? The other thing is that, um, you know, in these two cases, the rhythm is off. Right? And this one came too quick. So you don't believe me? That one came too quick as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You do believe me. <laughs> If you're ambitious, my friend. <laughs> anyway, just pay attention to reading. Okay. okay. Any other question or comment about what you have done? People that, from whom this was a new exercise. Yes. Uh, I found it hard when you were supposed to ask a question not to put words in the mouth of the other yeah. person. Like, a lot. Right. But that I, I mean, I, I realize that myself a lot of the times. Yeah. And I realize I will become better at not putting words in other people's right. mouth as, uh, as the week progresses. Right. And because that's a natural people. way. Yeah. That's a natural way to question. That's what you learn in school. Mm -hmm. You know, is that the, the, the right answer is the one the teacher has in the head. You know, he has already. So it's a very natural way. The second reason is that, in general, we want to be comforted in our ideas. We don't like people disagreeing with us. You know, and people say, I like it when people disagree with discussion, but it's not true. We prefer uh, to be comforted in our, in our ideas in general. We feel better, we feel smarter. You know, we don't feel rejected. And that's why some people prefer not to speak to others, because they're scared of being rejected. The others are not smart enough and they will reject them. You know? I won't give names, but the fact this happens. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Who's laughing here? <laughs> did you laugh at? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. So, somebody else who did this for the first time. Just try to see what... This only happens once the first time, so take advantage. What did you think? Yes. I think that, yeah, the same as Emil. I, I'm, I'm making statements instead of asking questions often. So I think that by practicing, I'll, I'll right. become a bit of questioner. That's what I'd like. Yeah. That's why I'm here, actually. And plus, what is your job? <laughs> teacher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, Emil's a student teacher, you know. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last one before we, we go eat. I've also 
something interesting. Um, I was doing it for the first time. Oh, something interesting, right? Yeah. It's a mother. I um, often take for granted this. Um, um, well, a thought might uh, be created uh, within, and then it should that it should uh, come out uh, afterwards. Afterwards. Yeah. But I mean. Uh, when you get questioned like that, uh, <clears throat> you discover, right? Or I discovered that, uh, you know, it's not clear uh, what is going on, wh whether it's a sentence, whether there's um, uh, anything, something else, or which sentence, or, or, or what is going on really. So at the end of the question or the questioning, uh, you might end up at a completely different place where you started. You might uh, feel that you are certain to begin with. But uh, at the end of the process, um, you're at a completely right. different place. Right. So I think that's uh, yeah. revealing, yeah. for me at least. Right. You know, um, I think um, you know, the utterance, utterance of uh, a word or a sentence is a completely different thing than um, um, the cognitive process or whatever right. goes on inside. But Natural for me at least to associate these two very uh, or link the two very strongly. But yeah, because the normal process is let me prepare the answer. You think blah blah, and then you give the answer. Here it's an ongoing process mm -hmm. where the thinking is an interaction, and that is not again normal or natural, right? What is normal and natural? It says I'm going to give you the answer all packaged, you know, mm -hmm. in the store. So that that's what you have to accept in this kind of process. To have something which is open, which is uh, uh, how do you call it? a draft, a permanent draft. Yeah? Uh, a, we use the concept of conjecture. It's all conjecture that you work through the process, right? Something shit. It's a very. It's not examination about what you have learned, and there's a package, you know, finished package, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a shift, and for some people, it's very uh, uh, painful because. They're used, they've been taught to be perfect. So, of course, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Because that means they have to open and sh again, I use the expression, they invite you to the kitchen. You have to accept to work together in the kitchen and not to force people to stay in the living room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody has a last urgent thing to say? No? Yes? Just be practical. Because yeah. we're not together. After dinner, um, then there are consultants. Right. So this is, or perhaps Kobe says, you know, I would like to know if there are seven people. Okay. And where we will meet. Okay. If there are seven people. After dinner, there, uh, there, there are two possibilities, the Kobe session. Either you do it here, you know, you can stay here, mm -hmm. give you a key, you lock when it's finished, or you come to the house. There are a lot of spaces in the house. In fact, the consultation, same thing, you know. Uh, you can either do it here or you can come to the house. I think it's more comfortable than the house, but anyway, as you wish, we have a lot of different spaces. Uh, by the way, Audrey will come during the dinner to uh, check with people. She has a list of potential clients and potential philosophers. She's going to try to uh, marry them, right? She'll ask you. We, we gave the option that's the client, we live in the world where the client is king. So it's the clients that will choose the philosopher and not the reverse. So she'll go see people. And for the copy session, uh, did you get some names, uh, Audrey, or no? Yes. Okay, so you give them to, to Ed, and for, if... Uh, for Ed or for Constitution? Yeah, no, for Ed, Ed who you did not. No. 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 no, okay. So people that want to participate to the Ed session every day for the next five days, 40 minutes, you go see Ed during the dinner, or you can ask him questions if you want to know more. Okay? All right? Uh, so far you have how many, Ed? I have four names. Four. So you need at five. least three more. Five. 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 So you need at least two more. Yeah. Minimally. And up, up until ten. So he still needs if another couple of candidates. Uh, yes. And of I would prefer to do it here. This is a good place. You, you prefer to stay here. Okay. So after dinner, people will go. So people, when you have finished dinner. By the way, one thing I was asked. If you can please put cups, plates uh, back in the kitchen when you're finished. You know it's part of the thing, uh, if you can pick up things, right, after dinner, put them back here, and uh, yes, or well, money, 
Isabel feels abandoned by some people that don't want to discuss money with her. Yes. She's okay, don't worry. Don't talk to her about money. Yes. Yes. So, please, so, yeah, try to, so she wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. You know, you can go talk to her. Yes. Will you do a public consultation? I am one of the philosophers tonight. Why don't you read the list of philosophers who propose to do consultation tonight? Okay, so Barley, so he, who don't do it. Okay. So each time she will ask you if if it's private thing you want or if it's okay public. But generally, uh, the mind, I, I, uh, the person I wants to do with me, it's public because I do it and people can come watch. You know, so people that uh, are come check who is okay with public or not. But anyway, but me, it's always public, right? So if somebody wants to come with me, by definition, it has to be public. Well, we'll do it every night. So every night we'll okay. see who. Every day we'll see who. who Oji will take care of it. Every day she'll see. Who wants to do be the philosopher? Who wants to be client? So, you know, how, how long is the session? Session only is one hour. Unless you, unless your your philosopher gets bored and falls asleep after five minutes, <laughs> which is of course some people we know they get bored quickly. <laughs> so make sure you you keep him awake, tell him interesting stuff, you know. And can we, huh? can we do two different people, different nights? We can. Oh, On the same enough. evening. Well, I don't know if people no, no. will do ten in one evening. Generally, it's more like one, you know? Different night, different people. You're the kind of girl that does different night, different people. No. That's a pretty how it is. No. Why not, you know? You know, you get experience this way, you know? You're right. You know, you'll get a lot of experience. <laughs> Anybody else has a very personal question like this? Okay, so, yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's put the tables for dinner. We have dinner, and when you finish eating, we go on the other side beside uh, Ted.